Hello and welcome to the New in Chess Masterclass Part 4. We are celebrating the publication of a new book called The Most Exciting Chess Games Ever. These games, these selections originated in New in Chess Magazine, where we have a column, a back page column called Just Checking. And in that column, chess experts are asked lots of questions, but one of the questions is, what is the most exciting chess game you've ever seen? And out of those dozens of games, we have selected 45 games. And one of them is Li Chao against Nigel Short in the Olympiad. It's a really a very um, uh, wonderful counterattack by the British Grandmaster who um, was the runner up in the World Championship and a columnist for New and Jazz Magazine as well. Um, the presenter is Matthew Settler, who is the book reviewer for New and Jazz Magazine, but also the author of award-winning books like Game Changer and The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. Please enjoy part four of the New and Jazz Masterclass. Well, but I'm going to show you the final game, which is Li Chao against uh, Nigel Short. So, uh, yeah, Nigel, um, this was 2016, I think, the Baku Olympiad. So Nigel, no longer at the peak of his powers, but still um, unbelievably tough and difficult to put away. And, uh, well, he certainly shows this in this game against uh, the young Chinese player, Li Chao. And I think this was quite a crucial game in the uh, Olympiad, certainly crucial for the match. So this was uh, a Nimzo Indian. And, um, uh, yeah, Nigel played a, a system that he's played um, um, quite a bit uh, in the past. Bishop d7, Bishop d3, castles, Bishop d2 from uh, Li Chao, and now uh, d5. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, you can't really fault black strategy somehow. Yeah, everything's uh, pointing towards the e4 and d5 squares, really. So, uh, you know, looks quite looks a very logical system. Now, Li Chao plays um, for a structure that um, that I've always played for um, a lot as well. Takes, takes and castles. And uh, I've always liked this. Actually, it's an alpha zero favorite as well, this type of pawn structure. Just gives you the opportunity to either play on the wings or in the center, you know, and that's either with a, a Pillsbury setup, which is one of my favorites, or the Botmanic type uh, approach with F3 and E4. Um, and uh, um, yeah, somehow this move Bishop D2 doesn't look uh, that aggressive somehow, but um, yeah, uh, it, it actually turns out to be, you know, very, very useful in the Pillsbury structure. So it's a bit strange to have played it that early, but actually it turns out quite nicely. So Knight BD7, Rook c1, lining up, maybe threatening something like knight b5. So Nigel decided to stop it. And now Li Chao went in with knight e5. And this is, um, you know, this is always, uh, um, yeah, a difficult moment uh, for, um, uh, for, for, for you as black. You know, uh, you're faced with this move and you know that white is going to play a move like f4 next to cement that knight into e5. And the key question is, can you take this knight on e5? And uh, Nigel recounts that he spent a very long time thinking about this. Um, knight e5, d takes e5. Um, now, let's have a look first of all. What happens if you go knight e4? Let's put a little uh, quiz into that one. Uh, short little quiz. 15 seconds, doc. Looking good to me. Oh, uh, yeah, knight takes e4 is the uh, is the the uh, the great move there. Um, yeah, and it's and it's weird, right? Because normally knight e4 is and knight takes e5 and knight e4 is the normal natural reaction to this plan. Um, but uh, the fact that this bishop's on d2 and that this bishop's on b4. That gives us uh, some extra possibilities because after takes, we just take it like that. And if you take on d2, then I go knight takes d2 and wipes the piece up. So that's a nice little point, uh, point of, uh, of um, bishop d2. I wonder whether Nigel underestimated it somehow, because certainly it's, uh, you know, you, I just looked at it the first time I saw it and thought, oh, that's a, an unusual little point. Yeah, I mean, if you take on here, then um, white's playing uh, f4. And uh, Nigel was very worried about, um, well, actually, just um, um, have a look at this. This was the move that I was uh, thinking of, and I actually did some engine playouts on this. Um, what suggests some, um, some uh, 
um, some candidate moves here, and I'll just, um, there's no right or wrong answer in there, this one, but suggest some candidate moves, and I'll give you bonus um, uh, points if you, um, if you find the move that I've put on the, uh, that I put on the board. Quite a few interesting uh, um, ideas. The very best move in the position is not at all obvious. I, I do wonder whether I'd, I guess I probably would, would work it out, but still quite, uh, quite tricky. Okay, fantastic. So Alex, uh, um, yeah, knight e2 would be cool, but unfortunately knight d3 protects the bishop on b4 there, so that would actually lose a piece. Um, bishop b1 is uh, quite a natural move. Um, bishop takes h7 was suggested by a few people. And actually, this is what Nigel was really worried about. And I can imagine it during a game, because uh, you do wonder whether am I going to be able to, to draw this. I mean, this is really something where you would very much want to switch on the engine and say, could you help me out, please, here? Because uh, I'm a little bit worried. What's happening after, after rook h3? Uh, in actual fact, f6 is supposed to be enough for black to, uh, to hold out and, uh, and escape. But yeah, you know, it's uh, very complicated. And it's one of those things, to be honest, that in a, during a practical game you kind of resent really because you sort of say well i don't think my opponent will go bishop h7 but i can't reasonably you know not look at it uh, play this move and not look at it or or if i do then i'm taking a huge gamble and i'll feel really stupid if my opponent does it and it turns out to be winning so it's one of those very unpleasant practical dilemmas really and you know i think that kind of um um influenced nigel to avoid this line um Actually, bishop b1 uh, can be met by d4, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, knight e2, we've got this move, queen d5, hitting uh, g2. The best move, apparently, is not at all obvious. It's uh, bishop c2. Be able to meet d4 with knight a4 uh, in, uh, in this position. And, um, and actually, my engine is quite happy with this. If you go bishop d2, takes and takes, and it thought that white had a a very nice advantage. There's some better things for black, but uh, basically, um, yeah, bishop c2, which is not at all uh, obvious to me, was quite a decent idea. But I think, you know, Nigel particularly worried about this bishop h7 check idea. He decided to play, uh, decided not to play knight e5. He decided to play um, rook e8. And um, well, now after f4, then white's kind of motoring, really, because, uh, you know, White's plan is pretty obvious. I mean, we can go rook f3 to h3. We can go g4 to g5. This bishop on d2 is very useful as well. We can bring it round e1 to h4. Lots of ideas. We can play bishop f5 as well, just to annoy this knight on d7. Lots of ideas for white. Black counterplay, not so obvious. Um, and Nigel, in the next few moves, really struggled with that. So um, knight f8, bishop f1 played. c5 played, bishop h4. And now Nigel played something that made me uh, sort of uh, smile grimly, really, when I when I saw the game, because he played the move uh, c5 to c4. Now, you know, if you know your uh, classics, you'll know games like, I don't know, Pillsbury against Tarash. Uh, was it Hastings 1895 or something? And, uh, you know, all these games where Black released the central tension with a move like c4, and these moves get criticised like uh, like anything, like, you know, what an amateur, a modern player would never release the tension in the centre. You'd never do that. You know it's bad. You're giving White a free hand on the king side, all of that. But sometimes the moves that you know are bad, you just can't think of anything else to do. And that's basically the, 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 um, uh, the situation that Nigel was in. Um, the point is that, you know, a move like C takes D4, E takes D4, doesn't really feel like it's bringing you much closer to getting any sort of counterplay. And... Uh, after a move like bishop e7, just to break the pin, um, actually my engines were just suggesting to take on here and then to play a move like queen f3. Um, so you stop a knight getting into e4 and you're just coming in with, you're, you're just going to come in with your uh, with your pawns and your pieces. You know, you, you're just bringing all those pieces over. It's very hard to find uh, something for black that really enables black to get at your position. You know, you're just bulletproof basically. And, uh, you know, Nigel spent a lot of time being unhappy. I think it was still better than what Nigel did, but, uh, and then eventually decided, right, I'm going to go for the old queen side play. And here Li Chao um, had a great little um, choice here. And uh, again, quite, quite difficult, really, uh, psychologically. You know you've got a good position as white, but you've got to decide, are you going to bring pieces into the fray 
or are you going to bring pawns into the fray? And uh, um, you know, the thing is, if if you if you bring pieces into the fray and it turns out not to be that good, then all that you find is that you've wasted time. If you bring pawns into the fray, then even if it's not the best move, well, having moved them forwards, you would have gained some space at least. You know, so often you know the decision that you take, it's not really based on absolute calculation. It's more sort of a, oh well, you know. Um, I'm not sure about uh, how dangerous it is, so I'll, I'll just gain the space and uh, make sure that I've always achieved something in the end, uh, even if my moves aren't uh, on the very best. And um, yeah, Rook F3 would have been very strong coming over Rook H3 or Rook G3. But uh, Li Chao's G4 is also very uh, powerful. It's not, not a pleasure for Black to, uh, to face. Queen B6, G5. I would have been tempted actually maybe to, to take on F6, but uh, G5 played Knight E4, takes, takes. Queen e2, bishop e5, and queen g2. So eyeing that pawn on e4, queen b7, and now f5. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe it would have been uh, a bit quicker if you'd got the pieces up looking directly at the black king, but the black king's not feeling very comfortable here. Um, you've got all sorts of ideas in the air. You don't even have to calculate them properly. Um, and uh, obviously you've got all sorts of thoughts about bringing the, the rooks into play as well. Uh, for the next few moves, Li Chao plays really well, uh, doesn't rush anything, avoids the exchange of pieces, keeps the knight as an attacking uh, piece, some sort of ideas like that. Bishop g3, another very nice move, eyeing the e5 square and also allowing the um, uh, the pawn to, uh, to move up. Rook c8 played. Yeah, I mean, I quite like h4, to be honest. I would have... Uh, that would have tempted me an awful lot just to uh, uh, to uh, to go h5 and then g6. But uh, queen h3 was played by Li Chao, so he's uh, just thinking about going g6, and who can blame him, really? So um, f6 played by Nigel, and he recounts, actually, that he got a bit more optimistic at this stage, which, to be honest, astounds me, because I'm, I'm hiding behind the sofa in terror at the moment when I'm uh, seeing this from the black side. Um, I did not enjoy my engine playouts, I can tell you, from the black side. So uh, g6, threatening queen takes h7, uh, mate, and then knight f8. And um, this is a really interesting moment, actually. I mean, uh, if you look at the position, I mean, it's clear that white's got a massive advantage here. Um, and in actual fact, you know, why is the advantage so massive? It's because black's got absolutely no play on the queen side yet. I mean, if you go c3, I go b3, and that's it. You know, like, you've got no follow-up at all. So, um, uh, so White's got a lot of time, but of course, you know, not not limitless time. At some stage, Black's going to work out how to do something. Um, and what my what my engines wanted to do, and uh, this was also suggested by Leela on um, just you know, like from from the very first move that it looks at, the only thing that it wanted to do was to play this move, King H1, which I thought was very impressive. And the idea is simply, we're going to go Rook G1 to G2 bring the other rook to g1 and then we're going to do some sacks on f6 and push this g pawn through and uh, that was just turning out to be absolutely decisive killing in in every single way um so that would have been you know that was really really impressive what happens with lee chow now is that he starts he starts wasting time a little bit mysteriously really and um bizarrely enough nigel's uh, queenside counterplay which looks so slow suddenly gets some sort of time to arrive so Rook f2 played, rook c6, rook f1. Yeah, what are these rooks doing on the f file, actually? You know, it's, uh, I mean, you don't mean to be harsh because during a practical game, it's never that clear, but it does look a little bit odd, right? I mean, this pawn's not going to be moving anywhere and we're doubling up behind it. It feels really weird. Um, a5 played by Nigel. What's Nigel's idea? Uh, rook e2 played, that's a bit better. A4 is the idea. So uh, the idea is now that after c3, b3, we can take on b3 and then we can invade along the a file and try and do something still doesn't look particularly impressive i do have to say but um okay that's uh, that's how life goes but um now li chow again you know the engines keep on saying come on please king h1 rook g1 invade down the g file sack something you know anyway anyway just clear the g file and let us power through um but li chow went rook f4 and uh, and actually bizarrely enough after this move, the engines think that the that, that position is equal or even a little bit better for black. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I mean, why? Because black's ready with uh, some counterplay. You've no longer even got any coverage of the first rank. So, you know, if the if the um, the B file does get opened, if the A file does get opened, then, you know, we, we, we're actually going to be in, be able to invade somehow. Maybe with a rook is even better. Uh, rook here and uh, rook A1. Um, so, yeah, the engine just thinks that black's better. But it's just, yeah, this whole, and, you know, when you do look at it, you know, the whole way that uh, somehow that white's organized the pieces, it doesn't feel... Uh, right somehow but um, again easy to criticize from an armchair with an engine running but um just intuitively you know when you look back on it and you try and uh, work it out you say yeah wait a minute you know those pieces do look really odd you know what was why thinking there uh, really so b takes c3 played bishop c3 bishop h4 but we were you know nigel recounts that we were in complete random uh, time trouble mode now so really crazy things start happening Queen b6, a good move from Nigel, actually, uh, helping to protect f6 and also thinking maybe about a, a bishop d4 sacrifice at some time. You know, it's a, yeah, very nice uh, defensive moves there. Uh, g takes h7 played, finally opening the g file. And now rook e7 from Nigel, uh, protecting the g7 pawn. Pretty decent idea, but um, things are about to get chaotic because Li Chao launches knight e5. And um, uh, yeah, Nigel, um, actually, Nigel should not take that. He should just ignore it. Rook d6, something like that. That's the right move. Just leave it there and pretend that nothing's happened. You know, it's very hard for um, uh, for White to, to really break through there. But uh, he took incautiously. And now um, we have a great move for, uh, for White here. I'll put it up as a quick quiz. It's quite complicated really but um uh i'll see if you can guess the uh the first good move there so uh plenty of uh, uh of uh, ideas here in the position you might be wondering why can't i take the rook on e7 there's kind of a clue really that uh yeah <laughs> that um it uh it's not the best move i think ah everyone's doing really well there brilliant excellent yeah yeah the best move here is uh is the move f6 and the the really the really um uh this game is in nigel's book oh it might well be i think actually this of us i think it i think it was yeah because he was he was quite did you no 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 it wasn't actually because it was a team competition and uh, his book on winning was all about um uh all about winning tournaments so no it won't be in this book this is only in uh, uh in the new in chess magazine and then in this in this uh, book as well no you're no it's a good it was a good question because he's, he's very proud of this game but uh yeah no it's uh, it's not in there so the, the key point is and it's a, a very hard thing to spot is that we go bishop takes e4 in this position it's really gorgeous um and the key point is is that the g file is open that's why you know that's why yeah uh, lila was saying put put my rooks on uh, get my king to h1 double up on the g file because the g file is really powerful if you take on f4 i go bishop takes f6 check um uh, i go if you take on f4 i go wait a minute what do i go there oh sorry bishop d5 simply that's the one uh, followed by rook g8 check or bishop f6 check and rook g8 check made there. So very very powerful attack there. So um, um, but yeah, this uh, this was raging time trouble, right? And uh, yeah, you can't resist taking a taking a rook, right? So rook takes e7 was played, e takes f4, and um, bishop takes f8. And here Nigel found a, a great move, but he he'd already you know he sort of set the um, um, the parameters for it by this move on move 31 queen b6 which he did on general feeling but it was uh you know protecting the uh the f6 square and also maybe someday i'll get bishop d4 and in this in this just at this precise moment he actually did and uh bishop d4 is gorgeous i mean it's uh you're threatening stuff like bishop e3 and you're also threatening bishop takes uh bishop you're also defending the pawn on g7 so you're just keeping things uh you know just uh, uh alive somehow um really uh really amazing so um well nigel uh, this was just going bananas now um there are a lot of tactics here with um uh um involving getting the queen active h5 e8 and giving some sort of petrol 
But um, well, here black play, white play queen g4, which to be honest would be my reaction straight away. Rook c7, amazing that black's just able to to wait like that and just uh, defend the stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's threats coming in, right? There's there's big stuff coming in, so uh, um, not easy at all there. Queen h5, f3, rook g4. And uh, Nigel says that at this stage, he understood he was completely winning, but he was just totally dizzy with all the, the possibilities. Um, the key point is there isn't really much of a threat here. So um, something like bishop e3 check, um, king to h1, and queen f6 would have been um, a very good way to um, to defend everything. If the you know, I think if the queen goes to h5, I think we can even just go king takes h7 here, and uh, you know, just um, uh, yeah. What are you going to do? You don't have uh, very much left there. But um, uh, Nigel panicked somehow and played the move bishop e5. And now actually he's he's actually, uh, um, black's actually in big trouble now because white could have played the move queen e8, queen takes e3 check, king h1. Um, and uh, well, I mean, there's a, a lot of danger uh, gathering here against the, uh, the the black position. Big problem is is uh, king h7, uh, rook to h4 check, which is uh, really nasty. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this as a puzzle, but don't you know? I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna uh, feel cross if you don't get it because uh, it's simply inconceivable this uh, this line. So black only has one defense here, which is uh, I'll give you the first move, queen e1 check, rook g1, and now I'll give you the quiz. How does black defend this? This is really, uh, yeah, yeah, this is uh, absolutely gorgeous. I'm seeing some great suggestions. Yeah, I'm seeing some great suggestions. Not quite seeing uh, the, the solution. The big problem is that if you go something like um, f2, then I go um, bishop g7 check, double check, and checkmate here. Um, but f2 is the correct um, is the correct idea. Um, the, but um, uh, you've actually got to prepare it, and the way to prepare it is to go king takes h7. My goodness me. And then, uh, uh, I mean, if uh, if this had happened in the game, and after rook takes e1, you go f2. And uh, actually, it's it's impossible to stop black from either going um, f takes uh, um, e1 or, um, or, uh, um, or e3 check, simply. You know, this is just uh, completely winning for, um, for black. Amazing, out of nowhere. So actually, there's one move for, for white to draw. And it's the move uh, bishop c5 in actual fact. Uh, and what's the point? Actually, the point's a bit disappointing. You're covering this one, of course. But after f2, you just give a perpetual check with queen h5 and queen e8. Ah, amazing. Amazing what humans can uh, can uh, produce in uh, in a game like this. But this move king h7 is just simply uh, out of this world. You know, I just, uh, I mean, if you spot this from uh, from far away, then you're uh, you're a hell of a tactician, it has to be said. Um, uh, Li Chao went, uh, didn't find that, went for the complete shock effect in time trouble and played bishop c5, which uh, made Nigel nearly fall off his chair. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a very good move. And um, queen h6 was played by Nigel, which is a great idea just to try and swap off uh, the queens. I mean, if you uh, take on here, everything is covered and those bishops are uh, completely dead. So uh, queen a check played, king h7, queen takes c5, rook c5. And everything is going. I mean, the big problem is that this bishop is uh, is cut off by the pawn on e4, and we've got all sorts of threats like queen e3 coming in. So uh, queen e7 played, the lovely little f2 check. I think there are other ways of winning, but this one's quite nice. The idea being that um, when you go uh, king g2, obviously something like king f2, I think queen h is queen h2, or is it rook c2 check? I think that's just uh, winning there. So white tries to avoid having that uh, check, but a gorgeous move, actually, a really beautiful ge geometric move. Uh, bishop c4, threatening f1 queen. And after king takes f2, queen takes h2 check is winning because king e1 is queen e2 checkmate.
I mean, that's a real fighting game, really. And, uh, you know, a very typical of Nigel, you know, just uh, uh, unbelievable determination, resourcefulness, and uh, at the crucial moment, somehow uh, coming through, you know, is, uh, yeah, I mean, really is a uh, yeah, fighting spirit uh, and, uh, and trickiness like that. Uh, no one's better at that than, uh, than Nigel.